Welcome back. In this video, we're going to learn the difference of selecting data with the methods lock and iLock. In Pandas, we can select data by using the methods lock and iLock. Both have some similarities, but also have some differences. And in both methods, to get the data we want, we only need to pass the indexes and the columns. Okay, before showing you how these two methods work with code, we're going to learn some core concepts and also we're going to see some examples. So first the lock method. So the lock method is label based. So we have to specify rows and columns based on their index and column labels. So this means that we have to write the name of the index or the name of the column in order to get the data we want with the lock method. So our first argument will be the name of the index and our second argument will be the name of the column. And now let's check the iLock method and this method is integer position based. So we have to specify rows and columns by their integer position values. And this one is a zero base integer position, which means that it always starts with zero. So the main difference between the lock method and the iLock method is that with the lock method, we only need the column and index labels. But with the iLock method, we need to specify the integer position values. So we have to locate a data inside a data frame and then see in which position is the row or the index and in which position is the column. Okay, now to understand this much better, let's see an example. So here we have this data frame that I named df and this data frame has three columns, foo, bar and bas, and also has six indexes. And the first index is zero and the last one is five. So here, this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 that is on the left, those are indexes. And those are the index labels or the index names. But here on the right, we can see the index position of each of them. So the first element has a 0 index position and the last element has a 5 index position. Here I wrote the name of the index using letters and not numbers in purpose because I wanted to show the difference between the index label and the index position. The index label is the actual name you see in the index. It can be words or numbers, but the index position can be only numbers and always start with zero. Okay, now let's see some differences between the lock and the iLock methods. So in the first one, you can introduce the label or the name of the index or the column, but in the second one, you only can introduce the position of the index or the position of the column. So here, for example, if you want to select an element with a value, you will see some differences between these two methods. So with the lock method, you have to write the name of the data frame, df, followed by that lock with square brackets. And inside these square brackets, you have to write the name of this index. In this case, I want to get the value of the index zero. So this one. So that's why I specify that index label. So here I wrote df.log and then zero inside square brackets. But in the second method, so the iLock method, we have to write df.iLock and inside square brackets, we write the position of this index. So in this case, the position is position zero. So the number. So here we wrote the number. Okay, now let's continue. And to select elements with a list is similar. So we write df.lock, we open square brackets and inside we write the list. So in this case, the elements will be the index labels. So in this case, zero and two. And for the iLock method, we write dot iLock and then square brackets and inside square brackets, we write the list, but now the list has the index position. So zero and two in numbers. Okay, now to select elements with a slicing, we have to write df.log and inside square brackets, we have to write the syntax start colon stop. So in this case, the start element is zero. Then we have the colon and then the stop element is two. So 
these two elements are my start and stop. And with the iLock method, we write tf.iLock and inside square brackets, we write the position of the index. In this case, the number zero and the number two. But here, there is a big difference between these two methods. So in the lock method, the start and the stop element are included in the slicing. However, in the iLock method, the start element is included. So zero is included in this slicing, but the stop element is not included. So it's excluded from the slicing. This means that we're going to get only the data that belongs to the index zero and index one using the iLock method. However, we're going to get the data from index zero, one, and two if we use the lock method because the start and stop elements are included in the slicing. So this is a big difference that you have to keep in mind when you use either the lock or the iLock method. So we'll continue with this tutorial in a second. I want to thank Medium for sponsoring this video. Medium is a platform where you can find thousands of Python tutorials, data science guides, and more. You can get unlimited access to every guide on Medium for $5 a month using the link in the description. Okay, in this video, we're going to learn how to select elements by index label with the lock method. And we're going to start by importing pandas and doing all these things we did in the previous video. So here I have the code that we did in the previous video. And now I'm going to run these three cells. And now here we have the data frame we created in the previous video. So we have the seven columns we selected. And now we're going to start by selecting with a single value. So here we're going to follow this syntax of the lock method, which includes the square brackets and then the row label or index label and also the column label. So our first example is to get all data about the player Lionel Messi. So here to do this, we're going to write the name of the data frame, which is df, then dot lock, then open square brackets as it says here. And now we write the name of the player. So in this case, it's Lionel Messi. And actually, I'm going to copy the name because it's written in a different way. So I make sure everything is correct. So here I write or I paste Lionel Messi or L dot Messi. And here I run and we get all the data about this player. So we have his full name, the age, and all this data. So now let's get a particular value of this data that we got. So for example, we can get the height of this player by writing df.lock. And now we have to write the index name. So in this case is the name of the player. So I write l.messy. And then we have to write the column label. So we want the height of this player and the height is inside this height underscore centimeters column. So here I paste the name of this column and it's here. So we follow the syntax and now we have this. So we run this and as you can see now we got the value of 170 and that's the height of this player in centimeters. So now let's continue with the next example. And in this case, we have to get that weight of the player Cristiano Ronaldo. So now I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it to have it as a reference. So now here in the index, we have to write the name of the player. And by the way, here we set the name of the column short underscore name to this data in purpose. So we can use this data as the index, ignore the numbers zero, one and so on. So here, this short underscore name help us easily find this data with the log method. So now in this case, we want the name of the index. And in this case is Cristiano Ronaldo. And now I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste it here. So here, the index name or the row name is Cristiano Ronaldo. And now we want the weight in kilograms. So here I write KG. And now it's ready. So now I run this one and we can see that the weight of this player is 83 kilograms. Okay, 
Now let's get all rows inside the height column. So, so far we get here a specific value of this uh, height and also the weight, but now we want all the rows about this column. So we can do that by using a special symbol or a special sign. So this sign is this colon and this allows us to select all the elements inside a row or inside a column. So now let's see how it works. First, we write the name of the data frame followed by that lock. And now here we want the height uh, in the column. So here we write comma and we write the name of this column. So here height underscore CM. And then here in the index, we want all the rows. So in this case, we write the colon and this indicates that we're going to get all the elements and all the elements in the index this time. So here we run this and now, as you can see, we got this series and this series is about the height of the players. So here we have the information about the height of all the players listed here. So for example, Lionel Messi is 170 centimeters, then Neymar is 175 and so on. And now we can use this symbol in the column labels. So I'm going to show you here and we have to get all the columns that correspond to the index Lionel Messi. So here I write df.log open square brackets and here I write the name of the index which is the name of the player l.messi and now we have to write the name of the column. So in this case, we want all the columns. So we need the column sign and I write it here and now it's ready. We run and we get all the columns that corresponds to the index Lionel Messi. So here we have the data and this one looks similar to the one we got here that we obtained by writing only the name of Lionel Messi. And yeah, it's the same. But in this case, we use this column that help us get all the columns of this index. Okay, in this video, we're going to learn how to select elements by index position with the iLog method. So as usual, I imported pandas and ran these three first cells to get this data frame that has these seven columns and this short name column in the index. So it looks like the one we created in the first video. And now we're going to uh, select elements with a single value. But in this case, we're going to use the iLog method. OK, let's start with the first task. And here we have to get the height of Lionel Messi. So we have to write df.iLog and then square brackets. And inside, instead of writing the names of the index or the name of the column, we have to write the position. So here, what we have to do is to write the position of Lionel Messi and this one is position zero in the index because here, as you might remember, Lionel Messi is first here in the first row. So first row, position zero. So here zero and then the height is the position of the column here. So this is zero, this is one, this is two and height is position number three. So we write three and that's how we do it. So now we run this code and we get the height of Lionel Messi. Then we have to get the weight of Cristiano Ronaldo and I'm going to copy this one so we can do this faster. So here first, the index of Cristiano Ronaldo here is one. And now the column of the weight I think is here. So it height is number three, so weight is number four. So here, instead of three, we write four. And now we run this and we get that the weight of Ronaldo is 83 kilograms. Then we have to get all the rows inside the height column. And in this case, I'm going to use the colon symbol and is this one. So this represents all the elements either in the rows or in the column. So here we write df and then dot i lock, then square brackets. And since we want all the rows 
we have to introduce this one first as first argument and we get all the rows. Then here we have to write the position of this height column. So here the position is three because we did before in this exercise. So it's three and we paste it here. So we paste it and we run now and we get all the rows inside the height column. Next, we have to get all the columns that correspond to the index Lionel Messi. So we write df.ilog and then we write the index that corresponds to Messi, which is index zero. And then we write uh, the colon symbol because we want to get all the columns here. So if we write the colon symbol, we're going to get all the elements that are inside the columns. So here we press control enter and now we get all the elements or all the columns that correspond to the index Lionel Messi. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. That's it for this video. I'll see you on the next one.